Welcome back, this is part two of our introduction to digital photography and in this episode we're going to be looking at metering and exposure. Now uh, metering is how your camera determines what the correct shutter speed and aperture should be uh, depending on the amount of light that goes into the camera and the sensitivity of the sensor, ISO, which we'll look at in a moment. Now I'm going to concentrate on just looking at two types of cameras here, Nikon and Canon, which I think it's fair to say they're probably the most two popular digital cameras on the market these days. And the reason we're looking at both of these is sometimes the metering modes are named slightly different um, on each model. For example, Matrix, um, as it's known on Nikon, is also called um, Evaluative on um, Canon. Now this is kind of, I think it's fair to say, this is kind of standard metering these days. It's uh, like a uh, a, a good for all kind of most situations um, and it basically uh, it utilizes the whole viewfinder and uh, to look at the scene and give you the correct metering for that given scene the next one is center weighted uh, which I think speaks for itself the metering is weighted for the center of the frame which um, if you if you compose your subject and uh, it happens to be towards the center of the uh, frame then this will probably give you the uh, good exposure for that not always the best composition uh, I might add but uh, in again you know it depends on the subject the third one uh, my favorite is spot metering uh, uh, known as spot metering by Nikon and partial metering by Canon. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, the spot metering in, in cameras uh, tends to be what they call a five degree spot meter, whereas uh, back in the day uh, I would use a handheld spot meter, it was a one degree, which gave you exactly that a one degree uh, reading from your scene, which is great for landscapes. So uh, there's all those, uh, those are the main three uh, that uh, comes uh, loaded on your camera um, and I think uh, Matrix, for 90% for of the time Matrix is fine and, and don't, let's not forget these days we're not shooting film and you know having that little bit of uh, doubt when we, when we press the shutter we're shooting digital and you've got that histogram on the back of the camera which is something we'll talk about a little bit later and uh, that is your best best mate um, you just gotta check that histogram as long as you know how to read it and it's very simple I'll show you how um, you that's all you need you just need to check that histogram and that will tell you whether your exposures uh, way off or not okay so exposure adjustment um, inside your viewfinder um, there is going to be uh, a little um, graph should we call it uh, like this one and I, I know this is very basic and a lot of people are going to say well yeah I know that um, but nobody's going to know it so I thought it was just worth mentioning um, when you're using your, uh, your, your your meter you need to line up this uh, this little dial here this little marker normally in the center uh, and that uh, that will give you the uh, correct exposure that your metering is telling you now in some cases and again we'll cover this a bit later that meter uh, doesn't always need to be centered sometimes you may go uh, a little bit over on the plus side so you're giving it more exposure or sometimes it may go about this way um, uh, under exposure but that's when you kind of are looking at the scene and you know that the meter is giving you the wrong information and and again I said it a second ago we're going to look at that a little bit later why the exposure meter may be telling you the wrong information the other thing that's worth considering is sometimes um, is the exposure conversation uh, you, you, you've got a dial uh, somewhere on your camera uh, to alter exposure now why would you need that well sometimes let's say you, you probably wouldn't be an option it probably is uh, not available to you if you're in manual settings because there's no need for it but if you're shooting on aperture priority or time value something like that where you pick the aperture the camera picks the shutter speed or you pick the shutter speed and the camera picks the aperture sometimes you may want to override what the uh, camera is telling you and give the image a bit more exposure or less and uh, the way to do that in those modes is to use the exposure conversation uh, dial the meter is a moron right now this is the phrase that was drummed into me when I was learning photography what that phrase is actually saying is the camera meter is only as good as a person pointing it now what I mean by that is um, the and, and I don't want I don't want you to worry or fret about this because you know this is not something you probably desperately need to know 
but I just think it's useful uh, to know uh, so you know what's going on when you when you point your camera at a subject. So um, the good news is these days that the meter in it is very very good, and you know 90% of the times you're not going to have any problems. Um, I forgot the last time I used a handheld meter. Uh, I normally now only use a handheld meter if I'm in a studio, or you know using flash um, f flash lighting setups uh, where I need to get the exposure for that. 99% um, of the time the camera's fine, the metering's fine, and obviously I've been doing this a long time. So I normally know when I point the camera at a subject, I instantly know if I need to give it more exposure or less, uh, probably because I've you know, obviously been doing it uh, all these years. So uh, you don't need to worry about this, and again, you've got that histogram on the back of the camera, which we'll be discussing next uh, if, you, if you have a problem. Um, so this is a tonal grayscale that represents the tones in the image. Uh, it goes from pure black, which is represented at this end, to pure white. Uh, you, your camera meter is, is basically calibrated to give the correct exposure for a mid-grey tone, which is this grey here. It's 50% uh, grey. It's also known as 18% grey. So uh, when you point your camera at any subject, it's kind of presuming that what you're pointing the camera at is mid-grey, and that's what it's giving you the calculated exposure for. So for instance, if you pointed this at, let's say, a white wall, it's going to give you a mid grey. So that means really you need to increase your exposure to give you the more lighter tones of that wall. Same thing uh, if you pointed it at, say, a black cat, that black cat's going to come out mid grey, 80% grey. So therefore, you need to darken the image slightly to give you the right tone for that, uh, for that black cat. As I said, don't worry about it, it's just really telling you this just so that you get a little bit more information of how your metering works, but do you have to know it? No, you don't, but I just think it's good, like I said, just to know um, how how these things work, so when problems arise, you know why they're happening. So uh, on that note, let's have a look at uh, what fools a meter um, in some sort of real world uh, examples. Well, several things fall, as I said. Um, strong, strong backlighting, like in this picture. Um, say you've got somebody uh, on a, 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 a lovely beach, uh, the sun's setting behind them, and you point your camera, get your camera out, and uh, let's say, um, for some reason, they're, they're not in the centre of the frame, and your metering picks up the strong backlighting uh, in the frame, like, like this image here. Um, if I point this camera at this image, chances are it may well uh, expose for the background which is a lot brighter than the foreground and be underexposed so therefore you'd have to increase the exposure to compensate um, so the other thing is uh, bright subjects um, so we already mentioned the the white wall well this is in principle very similar uh, snow if you point your camera at, uh, at snow because it's a very very bright subject predominantly um, it's probably going to give you underexposure so again you need to increase your exposure uh, for that uh, very dark subjects as to mention a black cat or black dog that can throw the meter. Uh, this image, for instance, um, this could throw the meter, depending on what metering you're using. It could, uh, if there's lots of black in the picture, it could pick up on that and actually overexpose the image. So, again, you need to be careful of that. So, as long as you know these things, that's all you've got to worry about. So, we move on to histograms now. And, uh, as I said earlier, I mentioned checking the exposure on the back of the camera. Now, the most uh, accurate way to do this is not to look at the preview image but to check the histogram. The preview image is basically a, a low resolution JPEG that the camera uh, develops for you to view and you know it has limited value but um, if I had to make a choice of the one thing to check it with a histogram because that's going to give you a lot more information uh, about the image that you're taking. Um, the histogram is basically is, is a graph that represents the maximum range of light values your camera can capture. Um, like, the, like the tonal scale I showed you just a minute ago that went from uh, black to white. It, uh, it goes. This goes from black to white also. Uh, it goes from black on the left hand side here, 
uh, up to white on the right hand side uh, the peaks these are not really that important but the, just so you know the peaks here uh, uh, or mountains uh, indicate how many tones there are in that particular area um, but it's really not that important um, the shape um, how broad the histogram is represents how much contrast there is in that scene again it's not really that important uh, to know uh, the important bits are the bits on each end of the histogram um, but uh, for instance let's just go through this the uh, a low contrast scene would be uh, see the histogram kind of bunched up in the middle here whereas a scene with lots of contrast maybe uh, a, a nice uh, sunny sunny beach I keep mentioning beaches so perhaps it's time for a holiday um, but uh, say it's a sunny beach where you've got uh, you know bright sand and uh, dark shadows and the sea that may yield a histogram uh, like this uh, or perhaps in broader than this which uh, shows that there's quite a bit of contrast uh, in the picture so let's show you some um, live examples should we say uh, real world examples of the histogram in action now um, I mentioned the most important bit of the histogram um, is the ends here now this is the picture I took on a snapshot I took on a beach and uh, back to beaches again aren't we um, and uh, it's just uh, a fairly low contrast scene um, and uh, I just basically took some snapshots now this is the uh, the picture that was done at the calculated exposure reading and by looking at the histogram here uh, I can see there's uh, all the information seems to be in the middle here uh, the most important thing is this area on the ends are not flush against the edges here which tells me uh, that uh, I've captured all the information that's in this scene. Now I want you to keep an eye on this histogram in the next few uh, images and watch how uh, it changes. Now remember if it goes to the left it gets darker, if it goes to the right it gets lighter. So this is my calculated exposure. The next one um, I underexposed from the calculated exposure I underexposed by one stop. Now look at the histogram it's gone further to the left which tells me it's got darker however it's not there's a little bit of clip what we call clipping here which means I'm losing a little bit of shadow detail you see that it's a bit small but it's going off the edge here now again keep your eye on this because it starts to get worse in a minute in my next exposure I underexposed by two stops now this is when the alarm bells start to ring because uh, okay your preview is dark but look at the histogram do you notice it's now gone off the edge it's hit the wall so to speak and uh, that tells me that I'm now clipping very important shadow detail in the image and uh, we can recover that in post-production but when we darken images too much and we try and lighten them we start to degrade the image and bring out lots of noise and artifacts so you need to avoid uh, underexposing your images too much I just wanted to come back uh, a little bit. Um, I said uh, I'm clipping important shadow detail. Uh, that's not always the case because sometimes we ha may have um, a very dark uh, set of tones in an image which are really not that important to the shot uh, that gets clipped and uh, sometimes you know you, you don't mind those clippings so uh, it's not always the case that we're clipping uh, really uh, important details so just bear that in mind on our next image um, we've gone the other way we've actually gone overexposed I've added an extra stop of exposure uh, to this image now um, bear in mind if, if we look at the uh, image here um, it is quite a light image there's quite a lot of light tones here on the beach and in the water and in the sky so uh, there's not the, that's not to say that this actually isn't um, a better exposure for for this scene so uh, again as our calculated exposure um, although it's fine uh, that we're not clipping anything um, I actually prefer if I had to make a choice I'd probably shoot this image at this uh, setting at one stop at over um, even though um, it's a little bit lighter, again, we're not clipping any detail. If you look down here, the, we're not hitting the edge uh, of the histogram here up against the uh, edge here of the graph. So we know, again, uh, although it's moved to the right and it's lighter, again, we've still got all the tones, captured all the tones that exist in this scene. Now, keep your eye on the graph. We've now gone two stops overexposed, and now look 
its head is clipped. It's uh, we're now losing detail. Whether it's important to highlight detail or not, uh, that depends. Uh, but we're definitely losing something. So at that stage, uh, that's gone too far, in my opinion. So uh, for this particular image, as I said earlier, the uh, exposure I would choose would be this one which is the one that is a stop over the calculated uh, meter reading. Um, the general rule um, in digital is you want to flood the sensor with as much light that as possible without clipping important highlight detail so you want to put as much, expo as much exposure in there that's needed but without blowing those important highlights now um, in certainly in Adobe Camera Raw you can recover highlight detail but only so much now uh, how much it depends on the subject and you need to run some tests uh, for that but uh, generally I find with my camera with my 1DS Mark II I can um, probably, with this particular image, I could probably expose this uh, by probably a stop and a half, two stops, and still uh, recover some of the important highlight detail in this image. But it will vary from image to, image to image, so you need to run some tests, and you know, if in doubt, if you can, bridge your exposures. That's the best thing to do, and make those decisions when you uh, when you get back uh, in the office or your studio or home or what have you, uh, and get on the computer. Um, but uh, general rule overexpose uh, but uh, without blowing important highlights well that concludes uh, part two of this video series in the next uh, in next and final part we're going to look at um, white balance we're also going to discuss file formats and the benefits of shooting raw which in my opinion is the only format really worth shooting and we'll also be looking at ISO uh, in some detail as well so I thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the final part of this series cheers